In my last video, we did the math. If you generate less than 400,000 words per month, it might actually be cheaper to use the OpenAI Playground than subscribe to ChatGPT+. And we've proven you get cleaner outputs too. For those of you who wanna make the switch, this is a full tutorial of the Playground. We're gonna show how to use it, how to generate text just like in ChatGPT, and all that is coming up next. Let's get into it. This is the homepage of the OpenAI developer platform. You access it by going to platform.openai.com. And when you log in, you'll get to this page. Now, in order to use the playground, you're gonna need an API key. So let's hover over to the left here, click API keys. And I already have this set up, so I don't know how this looks when it's a brand new account, but you might need an organization. You're for sure gonna need an API key and then under settings here, and then billing, you're going to need to add a payment method. So once you have a credit card on file, don't worry, nothing is being charged. In this developer platform, you're only charged for the tokens that you generate. If you don't generate any tokens, you don't spend any money. With the ChatGPT Plus plan, it's $20 per month, and you pay that whether you use it or not. So once you're all set up, scroll over to the left side, we're gonna hit playground, and then in the top left corner here, we're gonna click this button and change it to chat. And now you have your own chat GPT interface. Let's go through it. On the left side is the system prompt. This reminds me of custom instructions in chat GPT. So if you hover over your profile and then go to custom instructions, these two input boxes is the same thing that's going on here. So in one of my videos, I made a relationship coach. This was before custom GPTs were available. So I'm gonna copy this text. Let's paste it in the system prompt. Now, every time I send a message, the API is gonna look at this custom instruction and then answer with this in mind. So I know what you guys are thinking. Yes, this is a way to make custom GPTs within the playground. There's also an easier way with assistance, but we're gonna cover that in another video. So let's change the model here and we're gonna test this input. The point of this system prompt is I wanna create a relationship coach. I like Mark Manson as an author. I like his books. And it'd be cool if we talked to him about our relationship problems and he could give us solutions. So for example, I'd say I met a girl today at volleyball. How would I ask her out on a date? And click submit. And we get a generation that's in the style of Mark Manson's voice. I'll just read the first paragraph. It goes, hey there, first off, hats off to you for looking to make a move. Now, you might expect some magical line or technique from me, but as you might already know from my books and articles, I tend to go for the more direct, no BS approach when it comes to this sort of thing. So cool, I just made a relationship coach in the OpenAI Playground using my API. This middle portion is your chat. This is the same UI that you get in ChatGPT, but instead of your generations being here, you get them here. Now, a pretty cool feature of the playground that ChatGPT doesn't have is this button right here. At any time, you can delete the output and just generate it again. So let's say I didn't like this. I'd hit this button, it disappears, I hit submit, and look at that, it's generating a brand new text. I didn't have to change my initial prompt or start a new conversation. I'm able to play with everything right here. You continue conversations by scrolling down and clicking add message and a new user input appears where I can say something like continue on and then click submit. And the assistant will continue on just like ChatGPT. When you click add message, there's also the option to change it from user to assistant. Remember the GPT models work with a context window. So you can actually change the context yourself when generating text later on in the conversation. Now, conversations and chats are not saved like ChatGPT. On that website, all of your conversations are saved on the left side, and you can go back to them at any time. In the playground, there's a button near the bottom that's your history. If I click it, it gives you a 30-day history of your API calls, and I can scroll down and click any of those conversations, and it reloads it right here. On the far right are all your model settings. First off is the actual model that you'll use in your API calls. So if we click this drop down box, we have a bunch of options. We have GPT-4-1106 preview, 
That's the newest GPT-4 Turbo model. We have GPT-4, which has now been discontinued. We have GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K. That means a 16,000 context window. We have GPT-3.5 Turbo 1106, which is the most updated and latest GPT-3.5 Turbo model. It has improved instruction following, but its knowledge cutoff date is still 2021. And then the legacy GPT 3.5 Turbo. There's a show more models option, and you can select from all of these, but the two you're gonna use more frequently is the GPT 4 Turbo and the latest GPT 3.5 Turbo model. Next is your temperature slider. I like to think of temperature as how creative you want your outputs to be. So if you want more consistent results, lower this number. If you want more creative results, raise this number. This is what it says. It says controls randomness, lowering results in less random completions. As the temperature approaches zero, the model will become deterministic and repetitive. So if you want reproducible outcomes, lower the temperature. The lower you go, the more consistent the output's going to be. The next setting is maximum length. Maximum length is the maximum number of tokens to generate shared between the prompt and the completion. Different models will have different maximum length numbers. This model has 4,095 tokens as its max input and output. For an easy number to visualize, 1,000 tokens is roughly 750 words. So if I bring up my calculator, let's pretend this was 4,000. We could go four times 750 both your prompt and the output when this slider is full will not exceed 3000 words. You can lower it if you want shorter outputs and also to save money, raise it if you want longer outputs, but it might cost you more. Next is a stop sequence. Stop sequences are words or characters that once the model hits, it stops generating any more text. So for example, if I put a period in here, can you guess what would happen? As soon as a sentence is finished, the model would stop writing. And we can test it now. Let's go write me an article about fitness. We're only gonna get one sentence. Look, it stopped right where the period would be. The next section is top P. Its descriptive text says, controls diversity via nucleus sampling. 0.5 means half of all likelihood weighted options are considered. Not to get too technical, but large language models work by predicting the next token or the next word in a sentence. To visualize it, let's say the first word was green. What's a word that you can think of that comes after green? Maybe apple, maybe grass, maybe towel. But we for sure know it's not the. If you take all the text in the training data, there's probably a 0% chance that the word the comes after green in any of the text. So the AI model doesn't consider that word. When the top P's at one, that says that the model is considering every possible word that can come after green when it's generating its output. So that can be anything from green apple to green towel, like we did in our example. If the top P was lowered to 0.1, that means it would only consider the top 10% of words that would come after green. You know, green towel is not that popular, but I bet you green grass is. So green grass would be considered in this example where green towel would probably not. I'm gonna keep this at one because I want all possible generations. Next is the frequency penalty. How much to penalize new tokens based on their existing frequency in the text so far? So it decreases the model's likelihood to repeat the same line verbatim. Now, in my honest opinion, this was a huge problem with older models. And in many apps that I built, I always kept the frequency penalty at one because I kept seeing the same words be generated in every output. Words like additionally, words like furthermore, in almost every paragraph, the model would use those words. So with a frequency penalty of one or even two, if it used additionally or furthermore once, it probably wouldn't use it later on in the text. So if you're using GPT 3.5 Turbo, you might wanna use frequency penalties 
but if you're using the newest models, I don't think this is an issue at all. GPT-4 Turbo is so smart that I haven't had any issues with text generations. It seems to know when it's repeating itself and it avoids that. Presence penalty is very similar, but instead of words, it's more about topics. So if you were writing a 10 chapter ebook and you wanted each chapter to be very different from the one before it, I would turn up the presence penalty. But again, the newest GPT-4 model doesn't seem to have those issues. I'd only use presence penalty if I was using GPT 3.5 Turbo. Now in the top bar, you have your presets. Your presets are all of the settings that you've adjusted here. If you played around with these numbers and you like your output, you can go up and click save and save this preset so you can use it at a later date. I'm gonna name this one Playground Tutorial and save it. So now I have Playground Tutorial as a saved preset. I'm gonna write something quick here. I'm gonna write, hey, how's it going? Send this through, see what the assistant says. At any point, you can hover over view code and see exactly what that API post call would look like. So if you're building an app or a website and you want to implement GPT-4 Turbo or any of their other models, this shows you the code of your current conversation that you can use in your app. So I can play around out here eventually get the outputs that I'm looking for, and then find the code, copy it, and build it into my website. And this is exactly how I built my Autoblogger app. I created an API call called text generation, and I pasted in a piece of that code, and I was able to get the GPT 3.5 Turbo model working for this app. If you wanna share your playground state, you can click the share button. Again, I'm gonna call this playground tutorial, this time I'm gonna check anyone with this link can view. Let's hit save. Now when I click share again, this time it gives me a playground link that I can copy and send to other members in my team. This last menu option allows you to delete the preset. Let's delete the playground tutorial. And it also gives you content filter preferences. This will give you a warning when your outputs start generating content that will be flagged by the moderation system. And this is good for when you're building an app and you want all your outputs to be PG. You'll turn this on and you'll get a warning and you'll figure out exactly what presets and what prompts cause outputs to get flagged. That was the full OpenAI Playground tutorial. After you've been generating for some time, you can scroll over here and click Usage and you can get a good idea of how much you're spending in the Playground. I want you guys to keep track of this and see if you end up spending less in a month than you do on the ChatGPT Plus plan. Because if you're only doing text generations, using the playground with your API key might be worth it. On this page, you'll see all of the models. You'll have your invoices. You can see the recent activity and can export any usage data. You probably notice that something huge is missing from the playground and that's image generations. There's no Dolly 3 in the OpenAI Playground. This is exclusively for text generations. So if you need to generate images, you're still gonna need the ChatGPT Plus plan, or you can use Microsoft Copilot for free, that's the Bing Chat, to generate all of your images. If you guys like this tutorial and you wanna see me talk about the Assistance API, this is pretty much custom GPTs in the OpenAI Playground please write in the comments below and I'll make a full tutorial about this feature. You know, it's pretty cool. You have the custom instructions. You can choose the model. You can also add functions, enable code interpreter and retrieve files from a knowledge base. And then you can use these for even better generations when you create your content.